This is a mechanism of disease map for Turner syndrome. I'll be talking about the etiology, the pathophysiology, the manifestations of Turner syndrome, and then lastly, a few notes on the pharmacology and the interventions you could do to treat this syndrome. As in all of these flowcharts, each of these boxes are color-coded according to the core concepts that you see at the top right here. And I'll be clearing all of the boxes and going through them one by one as I discuss them. Let's get started. First, at the core of the etiology for Turner syndrome is that the patient is missing an X chromosome. They can either be completely missing an X chromosome or they could be partially missing an X chromosome in some of their cells in a mosaic pattern. Let's talk about how this happens. It happens through non-disjunction, and it's a sporadic process. If the non-disjunction of the sex chromosomes happens during parental gamete meiosis, then you end up with complete chromosomal monosomy. So the karyotype in this case would be 45X with nothing here, 45X nothing. Remember that a normal karyotype for a woman would be 46XX. But in this case, they're missing that second X. So that's you're completely missing an X chromosome. The other way that this can happen is sporadic non-disjunction of sex chromosomes during embryonic cell mitosis. So this results in sex chromosome mosaicism, where part of your cells will have that faulty karyotype, 45X, and the other batch of cells will have 46XX. So part of the cells will be normal, part of the cells will be abnormal. Because you have some normal cells in this case, these patients will have a milder phenotype. And as we get into many of the manifestations, they probably won't have as bad of the manifestations as the complete chromosomal monosomy type. It's worth mentioning that advanced paternal and maternal age does not predispose you to Turner syndrome like it does for some other genetic hereditary disorders. So once you have this missing X chromosome, how does that exactly manifest into Turner syndrome? A few other things happen. The patient has impaired ovarian development, and that leads to malfunctioning streak gonads with connective tissue replacing the normal germ cells in the gonads. The end result here is that the patient has much less estrogen and much less progesterone, so a deficiency in these two hormones. And there are a bunch of things that come from this pathophysiology. Some of these come from the deficiencies in the hormones, others come from other parts of the X chromosome. Um, so it might be ovarian related, it might not be ovarian related, but there are a number of features that are consistent with Turner syndrome, and I'll be discussing each of those. Some of these features we can even map onto this diagram to help you get a better idea for a picture of Turner syndrome. So let's think through them one by one. In uh, the first, at the top here, the patient will have low hairline. It's, um, it's, not, it's the opposite of a receding hairline. So instead of the hairline being higher up, the hairline is much lower, and it's more prominent in the posterior. So they'll have hair going further down their neck than a person without Turner syndrome. The patient also has low set ears, as you can see on that diagram. They'll have a small lower jaw and a high arched palate. They'll also have a wide web-like neck. So you can see this um, neck on the side here um, is pretty thick and it has a webbed appearance going out to the side toward their shoulder. Another issue you can have is a cystic hygroma, which is kind of a blockage in your lymphatic vessels that leads to a mass in the neck. Moving down below the neck, patients will have a shield-shaped chest and that chest will typically be more broad with wide spaced nipples. There are a number of cardiac pathologies. You can have an aortic coarctation. You're predisposed to having that in Turner syndrome, and you can have aortic dissection as well. And people with Turner syndrome are at risk for aortic rupture. This risk is further increased during pregnancy because we know that pregnancy is a very high volume state. So during pregnancy, they're at even more risk for aortic dissection leading to aortic rupture. Um, staying on the cardiac theme, let's go down to here. Bicuspid aortic valve is another problem that you can get involving the heart. Moving back up here in the elbow, patients with Turner syndrome can have cubitus valgus. This is essentially a malformation of the elbow that doesn't allow you to extend your elbow completely. There's about 15 degrees of um, space that they cannot extend to from their elbow. Kidneys are also typically affected, and they have malformations such as renal agenesis, where the kidney doesn't form at all, or horseshoe kidney, where the kidneys are kind of connected at the bottom here, forming a horseshoe shape. 
Patients with Turner syndrome also have short fingers and toes with nail dysplasia. The lack of proje- or sorry, the lack of estrogen leads to osteoporosis, which can lead to pathologic fractures later in life. We already talked about the bicuspid aortic valve. Patients with Turner syndrome tend to be shorter in stature. This is because there's this gene called the Shox gene that's present on the X chromosome that determines your height. And people with Turner syndrome only have one X chromosome, leading them to have shorter stature. They have a couple endocrine disorders, Hashimoto thyroiditis, as well as type 2 diabetes, and they have some pubertal issues and infertility issues. So they'll have delayed puberty, primary amenorrhea, and infertility. And those are largely related to both the impaired ovarian development and low estrogen. It's worth noting that these patients can still get pregnant in cases of IVF if they have egg and sperm donors. So it's possible for them to have children. There isn't necessarily um, something catastrophic in their uterus. It's really the ovarian and the estrogen problems. Now, how do you diagnose Turner syndrome? Usually it's based on these manifestations. It's a clinical finding. You can then of course do a karyotype where you'll see this abnormal 45X pattern and a couple other confirmatory tests. Um, In addition to having these hormone deficits, they might also have high FSH and LH. I saw this box pop up. Um, People with that are missing an X chromosome are predisposed to X-linked recessive conditions. This makes sense because if you have a recessive allele for an X-linked recessive disease, you uh, do not have that dominant allele to mask it if you only have one X chromosome. So they'll be predisposed to those and have a higher risk of those. Lastly, a few notes on what you can do to treat Turner syndrome. These patients will be on estrogen and progesterone substitution probably for most of their life, so you can directly address this hormone deficit. You can have surgical removal of the streak gonads. And lastly, some of the manifestations can be treated directly. For instance, to address the short stature, you can put these patients on growth hormone therapy to help them increase their height as they're going through puberty. This has been a short review of Turner syndrome. I hope it was helpful, and thank you for listening.